Good morning. Hope you're having a good morning. Hope your day started off well. Uh, headed into work a little earlier than usual this morning. I've messed up video one, so I'm starting over. That's okay. God's put this on my heart, so we'll just start over. Started a new phase in my devotional this morning. Talking about stewardship. How do we manage what God has given us? How do we take care of it? How do we use it wisely? How do we be a good steward? Well, to be a good steward, I have to first realize what it is that I have in my life that God has given me. One of the focal verses this morning was out of 1 Corinthians where Paul asked, what is it that you have that was not given to you? And that really struck home with me. What is it that I have that God has not given me? The answer's pretty simple. <laughs> not a thing. Nothing whatsoever. Everything I have is by the grace of our Almighty Father. Even down to the breath that I take in these lungs. Everything is by His grace. Now, there are things that I have worked for. Yes, work is required. I've worked for to get there, to receive what He has given. And you can say, well, Kevin, if it, you had to work for it it's not a gift yes it is with our father he says i'm going to give this to you but there is a requirement so what is it that he's given us that we value the most is it our money is it our cars is it our family what is it and you know as you get older in life as you mature, you realize, you know, I can ask a lot of people that are my age or around my age and older, and if you really think about it, what's the most valuable thing that you have right now that you can't, I mean, outside of people, what is it? And the answer is a simple one. It's time. Time is the most valuable thing that I have in my life. I'm not worried about money. Money's great. I'm not worried about things. Things are good. Time. There is a set amount of time that I have left. There's a set amount of time that has elapsed. I can't get that back. That's the most valuable thing in my life. How are we being good stewards of the time that God has given us? Now, we live in a society where it's kind of a, a badge of honor, so to speak, if you're really busy. I mean, it must be because anytime you ask someone, hey, man, how's it going? Well, I'm just really busy. You know, we're working, we're working 50 hours down down at the plant, and the, the kids is, you know, our kids is playing ball, and we we going out every weekend to do this, and we go into the lake, and we're we're doing this. You know, I ain't even. Got, I'm so busy, I ain't even got time to fish. You know, I've heard people say that before. That's pretty busy, but we do. We fill our lives with activities that keep us busy because we live, it's kind of, we live in America, which is hyper competitive for the most part, in my generation it is anyway, hyper competitive. And it's like we compete to see who can be the busiest, who can have the most stuff going on. And in that, we lose sight 
of the most valuable thing that we say we have, which is time. What are we investing our time in? Are we investing it in things that matter? Well, what matters, Kevin? Well, I know that the only thing that's going into eternity are the souls of men and women. Nothing else on this planet is, is going. I don't, I'm not going to need my truck. I'm not going to need my 401k. I'm not going to need any of these things. Because the only thing going is my soul. So, why are we so busy doing things that don't matter? Why am I so busy? Busy, busy, busy. We always worry about what's God's will for our life. Uh, you know, I've said it. You hear Christians say it all the time. I just, I want to know what God's will for my life is. And in the simplest terms, let's go back to the beginning the Garden of Eden, all the way back to the start. What did we see that happened? Well, it was a perfect world. We had Adam, we had Eve, we had the garden. Adam had a job. He had to tend the garden. We can read that. He had to name the animals. He had a job. He had things to do. But outside of that, we see that he walked and he talked with our Heavenly Father. That's what he did. That was all that was there in the perfect society. He walked and he talked with God. Doesn't say he ran around and God chased, it after, chased after him. No, he walked and he talked with God. So what's God's will for my life? Seems pretty simple if I break it down like that. He wants to spend time with me. He wants to have communication with me. He wants to walk and he wants to talk. Doesn't say he wants to chase after me. You know, I think about Psalms 23 at the end of Psalms 23 and it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow after me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy chasing after me. And I thought this morning, what if I make him quit chasing me? What if I let him catch up? What if I stop being so busy? Prioritize. Make him a priority. Make it a point to slow down sometimes and just say, God, I just want to walk with you right now. All of these things are going on in the world. I got so much I think that I need to do, but I just want to slow down and walk and talk with you because I know that's your will for my life. That's my prayer for me and you this morning. I want to slow down and I want to walk and talk with our Heavenly Father because I know He's got something to say and it's going to be good. Whether I want to hear it or not is good. It's good for me. That's what he wants. Goodness follows me all the days of my life. I hope you're going to slow down. I, that's my prayer. Slow down today and seek to talk to him. I've got good news. I know this in my own life. He'll talk back. If you will seek him, he will talk back. I love you. I hope you have a Super great day. God bless.